بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين. First of all, thank you to the organizers in this beautiful place with an amazing name. I don't know how did they come up with that, Rumi's Cave. Um, I've heard so much about it when you're overseas and you hear these names because I want to go see Rumi's Cave. It's a great blessing being here amongst lovers of a great lover. And that's a big blessing to love someone who actually found out what love means. Many people don't know what love means and they die with that misunderstanding of what love is. And one of the things that separates Rumi from everyone else is that he actually understood what love is. And he tried to tell us in his writing um, of what love is. Sometimes he failed and he admitted to that because it's an ocean and how am I going to put it in a drop? But one of the things that we need to uh, understand about Rumi and his poetry and his teaching is that he, his whole point of the book is for you to know that there's a station that you can reach. And it's called the station of Al-Insan Al-Kamil, the perfected human being. That all of you can, uh, can reach that station. And that station has many levels. At the highest level is to know yourself fully. There's different level of knowing yourself. The first level is knowing yourself that which is outwardly manifested, which is the easiest level. We call it the level of the nafs, the ego, the desires. You know, I like this. I like Mercedes Benz. I like extra hot white mocha. I like, you know, a Versace purse. I like this brand of, of uh, clothing and this brand of makeup. I like this. I like it when people give me likes on Facebook, right? I like social media. These are like outward things that anybody can learn. You really don't need a teacher for that. You are your own teacher for that. You don't need anybody. Um, that's the first stage. And the reason why that stage is important for you to know that, okay, I have the ability to know things about myself. So now I know what I like, what I dislike, what kind of food I like. What is next? And then you go one layer deeper inside of you and then you deal with your emotions. And then you get to know your emotions. Like what is love? Why am I getting angry? Why am I getting happy? Why am I sad? Why am I depressed? That's the next layer. And then you go to the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. And the seven, when we said there are seven layers of understanding anything, right? He has a poem about for the people that he complains about those who teach the Quran, the holy book. And he said, how long are you going to teach this zahiri meaning, this outward meaning? Can you go to the button? Can you go inside of it and tell us the meaning of what it means, what it really means, and bring our hearts to life, right? Bring our hearts to life. So, for me, Rumi is December 16, 1273, the night of his death. That defines who Maulana Rumi is. <clears throat> when everybody was sitting around him and he's on his deathbed, and he's about to leave. This is the last, last night of his life, and they know this, this sickness got very severe. And he said, uh, they were all asking him to make a prayer to uh, make a prayer that he gets healing so he can stay with them. This is, att again, attachment. These people are not free from themselves yet, those who are surrounding him. But Rumi at this point has reached the seventh level of his own self. And this is why a lot of people, when am I going to get to know myself? Know that Rumi got to full understanding of who he is on the night of his death. When he said to them, when they said, come on, pray, you're a saint, 
God will give you healing and then you will be with us. He said, Rao sar be ne ba balin tan ha marare ha ko. He said, please, could you just leave me to myself? I found myself. I don't need anyone. I don't need anything. I found myself. Leave me alone with the alone. Because if you find yourself, you definitely will find God. And if you don't find yourself, you wouldn't see God even if he comes in front of you and every blink of an eye. And he is in front of you and every blink of an eye. So the question is this, how did he come to that station? Like how does a person get to this station, this maqam, to come to know himself to that level? One of the contemporary poets said, Heech kas as pisha khud chizi nashud. No one became someone just by themselves. Heech ahan khanjari chizi nashud. No piece of steel turned itself into a beautiful sharp sword. Heech qanade nashud ustad akar. Talk a shagir de shakarri zi nashud. And no pastry maker, maker became a master pastry baker until unless he started as a student in the bakery school. Heech maulana nashud mullai room. Ta murid shams tabrizi nashud. And no mullah ever became the maulana of Rome. So many mullahs out there, but one maulana. So many mullahs out there, but one Mawlana. He said, now nah, where's all those Mawlanas? We have one Mawlana. But no mullah became the Mawlana of Rome until he didn't become the student of Shamsuddin Tabrizi. And this is why it's important to know who made Mawlana. Although he was the most brilliant human being of the 13th century, he knew all of the sciences. You, everybody who's here, I'm sure you read something about Rumi. Master of all of the sciences of Islam. He was a practicing Muslim, everybody knows that. But master of philosophy, master of Aristotle, master of Socrates, he knew all of these uh, sciences that Knowledges and he mastered it not as a superficial level. You know, most of the people just read Nicomachean ethics of Aristotle, say, Oh, I know Aristotle. No, you don't know Aristotle. It, they studied years and they studied all their works. So, what did who was Shams Tabriz that the meaning of these two oceans, this meaning created this mountain of gold when these two chemicals came together in the lab of life, the chemistry lab of life. And your life is a chemistry lab of life. And people know you come with the wrong element and you have toxic output. How many toxic marriages are out there? But how many gold marriages out there? How many toxic families out there? How many gold married families out there where brothers and sisters and parents, they are completely in love with each other, in honor, in respect. My grand uncle, who was a great Sufi master, his son used to come, when he, whenever his son used to come to the class late, he would stop the class, he would stand up for him, to his son. His son was saying that, I'm not going to go to a class if I'm late ever. So he went to his dad and said, I'm, I refuse to come to the class if I'm late. He said, why? He said, it's embarrassing. You stand, you're the sheikh, the grand master. I'm your son. Why you stand for me? He said, son, if I don't honor you, who will honor you? It starts from there. That's a gold family. That's a gold family. But then there are toxic family. 
people who dishonor their children, disrespect, and the other way around, family, husbands and wives. But this is gold. This is the making of gold. And that's what Shams did. Zero zabare ishqam, Shamsul haq tabriz ast. Jan raze pae ishqash, man zero zabar kata. Shams came into my life and he flipped me. He keep flipping me, right? He said, I loved it. I loved it so much that I even flipped my soul for him. I flipped my heart for him. Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deeni. What is the dua that the Prophet made the most in sajda? This is the dua, this is the prayer. Oh, the turner of the heart, right? You want somebody to come and turn your heart towards yourself first to see yourself and then to see the light of God. So Shams came into his life and he flipped him. And he flipped him not upside down, but rather flipped him right side up. And this is why Rumi became Rumi. If he didn't meet Shams at Tabriz, he would be nothing. I guarantee you none of us in this hall would have ever known his name. But the greatest conversation of Shams in Rumi, in the Diwana Shams, Morda budam zinda shodam, giriye budam khanda shodam, dawlat ishq aamad o man, dawlat paayinda shodam. Rumi said, I was dead. And I saw Shams, I came to life. I was sad, depressed. Shams came to my life, I became happy and joyous. Because Shams brought the kingdom of love. Shams brought me the kingdom of love. And he has made my kingdom eternal. Because lovers don't die. Right? Why do we talk about Leila Majnoon? Why do we talk about Romeo and Juliet? Right? This story would go on until the end of time. Didei sir ast mara, jaan dilir ast mara. This is the most important line in the Diwan Shams, if you want to know why Rumi is Rumi. He said, there are three qualities in me. One, I don't have any greed for anything. When your eyes are content, I have everything. Because why? Because he has himself. You don't need anything if you have yourself. Those of us that are searching for things of this world is because we don't have ourselves. And we're trying to fill this void and hollowness with the things of the world. We get depressed, we go shopping therapy. It doesn't work. Depression is what? It's a spiritual state. It's not a psychological. That's why Prozac is not going to help you. It's just going to make you feel good for a while and then it's going to come back. Because it's not a psychological state. That's what Rumi doesn't believe it's a psychological state. It's a spiritual state. And you can fix that spiritually. You can't fix it psychologically. We're giving the wrong medicine. The problem is because we don't look at ourselves. We're always looking at the others. You know, the great Indian poet Ghalib said, Umar par ghalib yehi bool karta raha, do chere parte or aina saf karta. He said, oh Ghalib, what great mistake you have made all your life. The dirt was on your face and you were wiping the dirt. <laughs> and this is what we do. We're wiping the dirt. You know, look at ourselves. And this is what Rumi is trying to teach us. Look at yourself. Fix yourself, right? Fix yourself. So he said, I have eyes that are content. I don't have any need, any wants, nothing, no desires. And I have a heart of a lion. And if you don't have the heart of a lion, you better not walk in the path of love. This path of love is not like foxes. It's not for the fox. Not, not for the dogs. It's for the lions of the world. You have to be the leader. You have to be a warrior. A real warrior. Soul warrior. Mm -hmm. 
زهره شیر است مرا زهره تابنده شد and he said I am the cream of the crop I'm not an ordinary person this is not arrogance it's not kibbutz this is when we have to speak the truth if somebody asks you you speak the truth and they're not liars he was the greatest mind the greatest thinker of his time he said I am the the cream of the crop. But I use that for good. There are a lot of people who have intelligence and they create like bombs. Right? That's what they do. So, then the conversation continues. When he says this thing, Shams comes in and he tells him. Because this is the greatest, I believe is the greatest conversation between a teacher and a student ever happened. گفت که دیوانه نی لایق این خانه نی So Shams said, oh, Rumi, these are all nice stuff you just said, but you're not crazy. And in my house, only mad people can come. He's trying, Shams, Rumi is trying to tell him how amazing he is. But Shams said, no, 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 you gotta be crazy. Crazy people, interestingly enough, they are the purest people on the planet. They don't have any hypocrisy inside of them. What you see is what you get. And that's what you wanted him to become. His inward, his outward is one. <coughs> that's the madness. Then you become one. There's no dualism in you. There's no dualism. This is what he took away from Rumi. Do he as what Biru Kalanam? I removed dualism from myself and I saw oneness everywhere. So, he said, you're not mad enough. You can't come to my house. And if you want to know Rumi, really look at the answers. Immediately, he said, I just went immediately became mad and crazy. Because I love them so much, I want to be connected to his sense, to his chi. Gof kesa nasli, rog azim nasli. Then Shams said, no, 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 you're not intoxicated. This is a place where all of us are intoxicated. You come to a gathering of people who are intoxicated and be sober. Rafa was a master, was terrible. And I went and I got so intoxicated that you know the wine got intoxicated by the weed. But that is no master. Name was it. I'm not drunk because of the wine. The wine is drunk because of me. Go to two kushtini. Was tarabo kushtini. And now Shams is taking it to the house. The problem with you, Romy, is that you're alive. You're not dead. You have to die for your beloved, right? Pishar al-Khazim the Kunash, Kushta wa Afghanish. And Romy said, I immediately died in front of him. And he said, This is the face that gives life to the death. And I died in front Gofka tu shu khakaki masto khiyali mushaki. Shams said, oh, nice. That was a pretty nice game you just played with me. Whatever I say, oh, yeah, no problem. We're lip service. That was nice. You played Hollywood, playing games with me. You're too fast. Very tricky. Very smart. I mean, very smart. Gul shalam, gul shalam. What's hamadan? And Rumi said, I immediately became gullible in a loner. And I stopped speaking. Went in the corner, all quiet by myself. Gov ketu sham shumi, kabay in jam shumi. He said, oh, Rumi, you became the illuminated candle. And you became the candle of the people. You're supposed to guide people to God. It seems like you're guiding them to yourself. Right? And this is what happens. 
the messengers become the message. When things get to your head, you think of somebody. And he said, Chan Nian, Chan Nian, do the parochial mission. He said, no, 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 I'm not a Chan. I don't have any organization. I'm like this, the smoke that when you kill a candle, it's scattered everywhere. Go of Kishek, he was sorry. Peace, I would have body. He said, oh, you become a sheikh, a master, a guru, and you become the leader of these people. Wow. Very nice. You know, he said, Sheik Nia, Peach Nia, I'm the Torah of the mission. He said, no, 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 I'm not a Sheik. I'm not a master. I'm not a leader. But what I am, I'm here to obey your command. Whatever you say, I do. Amazing story. Amazing story. Go tomorrow, Eshke Kohan, as Barimo Nak and Makon. Say, Lord, stop telling me all these stories you have memorized, all these lines of poetry you have memorized. Trying to impress everybody. Go tomorrow, Ari Nakon. So can the Boshin Mishra. He said, From then on, I stopped speaking. And I became quiet. Go to Kibabal of Hari, Man Parabal of Nadia. He said, Oh, Mumi, what do you want from me? You have your own wings and feathers. You can fly here and there. You jump and fly. There's, there's birds that can fly just a few feet or half a meter, right? And then they fall. That was your wing. You can fly, but it was like a hen. It wasn't like an eagle. And that's what Shams wanted to do. This is taking him high and high and high, stripping all that stuff away from him. So he became the eagle. He said, you have your own wings and your own feathers. What do you want from me? And Ruby said, Dar havase bol parash, be part of that generation. And the hope of Shams' wings and feathers, all my feathers fell. Chashmei khurshi tui, so I got him beat man. He said, Oh Shams, you are the illuminating sun and I'm the shade of the tree. Chun kizebi bar salaman, pastor with those emotions. But when you came and you illuminated on me, I became worthless. But in reality, he became priceless because Shams took his shadow away. He made them shackles. This is all we're going to do. We don't want to have a shadow. Then Rumi realized the companionship, the importance of companionship. And one of the things that Shams taught him was this that the essence of life is to reach a level where you are worthy of the companionship, of that internal kind of, that perfected human being that is for you. Not everybody is going to have a chance at least, but you will have a chance. Because God is not unfair, you'll have your chance. But the problem with chumps of the world is that their forms are ugly. That's the only problem. Their forms are ugly. Shams was an ugly form. Hair, the shovel, beard everywhere. Everybody thought he was a homeless, loner, weird guy. But that's what it is. The treasures are always in the ruins. And how many people lost their treasure because the form was a ruin? So, they long as they kasi benchi ki u as del khabar. So now who is telling us? advice based on what he heard from Shams. Oh my friend, keep the companionship of the one who knows the affair of the hearts. Bazira on Darachtiro ki ugulhoi tardora and sit under a tree that has fruits 
and the branches are filled with fruits and with leaves that it gives shapes to you, it gives fruit to you. در این بازار اتاران مرا و هر سوچوی کاران This is a shopping mall Don't go window shopping This world is the shopping mall of ideas Don't go window shopping But do call a kasi binchi ke dar do kan shakar do Go sit at a store Find that store that sells sugar and sweet And once you find it, enter and do not exit. Sit here and enjoy the sweet for eternity. This is called halawatu iman, the sweetness of faith, tasting the sweetness of faith. Tarazu garnadori pastora zu rahzanat harkas. And if you're not balanced like him, everybody will trick you. Everybody can take you out of the path. You have to be balanced. Yaki kalbi bi arayat to be dali gazat ara. Someone will bring you a fake gold coin, and you think it's a real gold. You won't be able to distinguish between real and fake. You won't be able to distinguish between real and fake. That is the essential message of Rumi for us what he's teaching through the Masnavi. But at the essence of the Masnavi, we had, this week we had courses and talks, so I don't want to repeat any of those things. There are many things, but one of the things that Mawlana is trying to teach us is that life is going to send you things. It's like rain that's going to come all the time. It's just going to come in your life. You're going to be hit with things, right? You're going to be hit with things. And how do you react to those things is what's important. Not what hits you. Not what comes to you. It's your reaction. It's your reaction. And this is why he said that you are like a guest house. You are the guest house. Know that your body is a guest house. Every morning, a new guest arrives into your hotel. Into your hotel. And this has multiple meaning because this, this story is only three lines. Uh, the guest house. There's only three lines. But it's a prelude to the next story about the, the guest that comes into the house. Uh, and it's a beautiful story, but it's I could never do that story as a teaching class because it's rated R. The Rumi has some rated R stories, but I, and I, it took me a long time why he would have that, but I realized that he's talking to every class of people, every group. He's talking to the gangsters, he's talking to the rappers, he's talking to the people who are doing symphony, he's talking to the presidents, he's talking to the to the killer, he's talking to people in the prison, he's talking to the rich, the famous, the beautiful, the ugly, everybody. The good, the bad, and the ugly. His message is for everyone. So that's why he has some of those things in there in order to penetrate through the hearts of those who would appreciate it in that way. But the story of the next story is about a man who comes into the house as a guest. So he comes in as a, to the house of this man and woman and uh, as a guest, and they welcome him, and they say they make food, and then they fix. So the wife fixed two beds. He goes, you know, give the guest a high bed and you sleep by the door, honor the guest. He goes, sure. And then, so she goes to clean the dishes after. And then, so the husband comes in and goes, sir, that's your place. He goes, no, 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 I can never sleep there. Uh, this is your house. I'll just sleep by the door. He goes, no, 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 you're the guest. He goes, no, 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 just let me sleep by the door. I feel more comfortable. You sleep in this is your house. You're comfortable there. So finally he convinced the man to sleep by the door, uh, sleep at the nice, and the guest sleeps by the door. And then the wife finishes washing the dishes, puts on the nightgown and comes and slips into the bed of the wrong guy. Because <laughs> she made the bed for the guest on top and the, her husband in the front and goes and gives a couple of kiss on his cheeks and goes, sweetie, uh, we have a big problem. And the problem is that it's raining. 
It's raining and we're stuck with this stupid guest. I don't think he's going to leave for a few days. It's raining heavy and I don't know what to do. But she doesn't know she's talking to the guest. She's in the wrong bed. So the guest gets up and goes, don't worry, I got rain boots. I'm out of here. So he gets up and he leaves. When he leaves, they are broken. And how did we, why did we do that? Why did I do that? Guests are from God. They come with their own sustenance. We should honor. Why did I do that? And so they start praying to God. Oh God, please send us a guest. I promise I'll honor them. I promise I'll honor them. I would never dishonor my guest. But the three lines of the thing in the Hinmagu uh, Kin, the, the, the three lines of the guest house. Hinmagu Kin Monad Andar Gardanam, Ke Hanus Aknun, Ke Hamaknun Bos Parad Dar Adam. Don't say, when things come to you, don't say, oh man, I'm stuck with this for eternity. He said, because it will immediately fly away from your head. These are also thoughts, because your thoughts are from four sources, right? It's called the khawatir. So you have khawatir rahmani, khawatir malakani, khawatir nafsani, khawatir shaitani. You have thoughts from God, thoughts from angels, thoughts from Satan, and thoughts from your own lower self. That's it. You get those, you're done. You know where all of your thoughts come from. So if you can get those, then you can say, okay, this is from God, this is from angels, this is from my own desires or this is from Satan. Uh, and it's not that hard to get that science. You, it's, as a one day course you will get like, the secrets of how to distinguish between your different thoughts that come into your, to yourself. So what Rumi is saying that all of these thoughts that come in, that in the, the last line of this, whatever comes from the unseen world, the unseen world is only two. Is either from God or from the angels. Because that is from your nafs and from Satan is from the seen world, from the dunya. He said, honor that and keep it happy. And those things, whether it's thoughts, whether it's guests coming to you, whether it's trials and tribulation that God afflicts you with, whether it's wealth that God makes you rich, people become rich and they stay away from God. It's so funny. Like people who have nothing, then they get blessed with immense amount of wealth. And then they just start distancing themselves from God. Instead of just showing gratitude. That's all you have to do. There's nothing God wants from you if you have wealth. All he wants is just show gratitude. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's it. And he will give you more. But they say, no, 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 I, I, I'm the one who did it. I was so smart, I came up with this idea, and I'm rich, and I'm this, and I'm a genius. Like, they don't know that these are all, and this is what Rumi is saying, and I guess, that these are all inspiration. Who is giving you that inspiration? Who is giving the inspiration? It's God. We did the poem of the, of the man who was calling on God, and he stopped calling, because he was always saying, oh, Allah, Allah, Allah. And then Satan came to him and said, come on, you never had an answer. Why are you calling upon him? And he was like, whoa, I didn't get an answer. You're right. I'm going to stop calling on God. And then he falls asleep one day and says, why did you stop calling on, on us? Like, what, what's wrong? Like, you regret calling upon us? He said, well, I never got an answer from you. I called all my life. I said, God, 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 you couldn't even answer one time. And God said, don't you know that your calling was the answer? Like who put those thoughts in your head to call upon us? Like who gave you the energy? Who reminded you to call upon us? And this is the problem of the human being. This is the problem. But at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, and I actually want to make sure that we're done quickly because it's, they started late. You know, one thing said, Hussein Nasser said, he said, why do we punish those who come on time and honor those who come late? We wait until everybody's there. So the, our tradition is you start on time, even if there's nobody in the class. Because there's always somebody in the class. You might not see them, but there's somebody in the class. Um, but at the end of the day, Rumi's message is he wants to let you know what the reality of the world is. And the reality of the world lies 
upon one thing. All of our anxiety, all of our grief, all of this rap race of the dunya of the world and going and coming back and not living life is because of one thing. It's all because of one thing. He has a story in the Masnavi about a cow. And he says, Yak Jazire Sabs Hasan Dar Jahan Andaru Gawi Stanha Khoshdahan. There is a and this is a poem because some, some of the poems of Rumi is in the past tense, some are in the future tense, but some are in the present tense. This is one of those that's in the present tense. He said, there is an island in this world. It's luscious green, full of grass, beautiful, huge island. And in this island, there's a cow. One cow lives in the island. He has the entire island for himself. So happy because he can graze and eat whatever he wants. جمله صحرا را چرد او تا به شب تا شود زفت و عظیم و منتجب and this cow goes from one side of the island to the other side just keep grazing grazing all day so we keep so fat and big and heavy شب ز اندیشه که فردا چی خورم گرد ادو چون تار مو لاغر زغم and then when the night comes this cow loses all its weight and becomes so skinny. He's like, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to eat tomorrow? I finished all of the grass. So he loses weight and he goes through this state of just grief and crying all night. Oh my God, what am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to eat tomorrow? چون برایت صبح گردد سبز داشت تا میان رسته قصیل سبز و کشت and then when the light of dawn comes, he sees like, oh my God, they grew. It's all green, grass is there. Wow. And that of that go by Jewel Bakar. So this cow goes with the, Rumi said, with a cowish appetite, goes and starts grazing and eating this grass all day. And then what happens? What do you think happens then? Both shab and dar tab of that as faza. Ta shabat lagar zakhofi muntaja. And then night comes in and fever comes to him and he gets sick. Like, There's nothing in the island to eat. Food is finished. Food is finished. Grass is done. Heech nandi shat kitchen din sal man. Mi khoram zin sabzazar o zin chama. Now Rumi comes into the story. Said, what is wrong with this cow? Why can it think about this? That I've been eating from this island all my life. All these years I've been eating from this island. Hij ruzi kam nayomad ruziam. Chist in tarso gamo del suziam. Not even for a day my sustenance was diminished that I didn't get to eat. Every day I ate. What is this fear that is inside of me? What is this anxiety that is inside of me? Boss chun shab mi shabad on go is aft. Mi shabad lagar ke awar rez raft. And then when the night comes in room, he says, this fat, big, chubby cow becomes skinny, loses weight, and instead of anxiety, oh my God, my sustenance is gone. I don't have anything to eat tomorrow. Okay. Story of the cow. Now Rumi takes it to the next level. Nafs on goest wa on dash in jahan. Ku hami lagar shavat as khawfanan. He said, oh my friend, you're the cow. Your nafs is the cow. Your ego is the cow. Your desire for wanting is that cow. And that island is this world that you're living in. And the reason why you're having anxiety, the reason why you're depressed, the reason why you're in fear is because of a morsel of food. Is because of a morsel of food. What would I eat tomorrow? What would I eat tomorrow? Lutafardo as kujo sozam tala. How are we gonna find food for tomorrow? How are we gonna, how are we gonna survive? Who's gonna put the bread and butter on the table? Right? Nurumi comes back into this story. Salha khurdi wa kam namad zikhwar 
ترک مستقبل کن و موزی نگر سیدو بای فرین You have been eating all your life just like that cow And never ever Your sustenance diminished There was not a day that you You're here, the fact that you're here You ate every day of your life Can you abandon the, the future And start reflecting on the past All of those times that you ate and the food came in لوت پوت خورده را هم یاد آر من گرن در غابه را کم باش خار He said I give you an advice If you want to be happy Just remember all of the food that you ate All of those time Every time it came Time of difficulty, time of sickness Time you had no job, time you were traveling Time you were migrating in the middle of the desert In the middle of the tents Your food came He said don't Don't be too anxious about the future Reflect on the past and know that the same one who sent you food yesterday and the yesterdays of your life will send it today and tomorrow as well. So just relax. Just relax. All of our anxieties is for food. I'm telling you, it's all for food. We work so hard for food. Right? One of the great scholars said, He said, when we go to the marketplace, all we do, we check all these tomatoes and make sure and it's the right one. And everything, we spend so much time. He said, but all of those goes to the toilet. And you spend so much time on making sure they're perfect. And yeah, when you go to prayer, why can't you pay that kind of attention to your prayer when you're with God? Why is it, and I'll end with this, why is it that we are so disconnected? That we don't understand God in our lives. Majority of the young people, they don't have any connection. They don't even know what it is. And some of us, most of us who have been handed down the tradition, it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. It is, it is what it is. Right? Rumi says a story It's going to be a double cow story today. I usually never do double cow, but we'll do a double cow. So he, he has a story about a cow. And this story is about a, um, a villager, a village man and his cow. Rustoi go dar au khur bebast, shir go ash khur do bar joy ash nishast. So this villager has a cow and loves his cow, takes the cow to the stable and ties it up and then comes back home. And when he comes, a lion comes in to the, cave, to the stable, eats the cow, and standing in the place of the cow. This is the setting of the story. So he said, now he's like, man, let me go check on my cow. Let me go check on my cow. So one thing about death and the news of death, somehow it reaches you even if no one tells you. So there's something about him, he's like, I want to go check on my cow. So he goes into the stable to check his cow. But he doesn't know what happened. So he was rubbing this lion, sometime on the top and sometime at the bottom, sometime on the back. And, oh, nice cow, you're such a nice cow, you're a good cow, right? Sheer goes. So the lion said, oh man, if there's any light in this room, this man would have a heart attack. How disrespectful is he to the lion, to the sultan of the jungle? What is he, what does he think he's doing? He's thinking, I'm a cow? It's because of the darkness of the night that he thinks I'm a cow. But I know that if light enters this room, his heart would burst and he would die immediately. Right? Uh, now, this is first level. Now Rumi takes it to the next level. From the micro to the macro. حق همی گوید که ای مغرور کور نیز نامم پاره پاره گشتور 
God is saying, oh, deluded, blind human being. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know that Mount Sinai turned into dust, into nothing? A mountain crushed simply because of my name. از من ار کوهی احد واقف بودی پاره گشتی و دلش پرخون شدی ایون ماون احد اف این نو مای ریالیتی ا استریم اف بلاد وود کم فروم ایتس هارت اند ایت وود ریپ این تو لیتل پبلز از پدر و از مادر این بشنیدی یو نو ایتس نات یور فالت یو جاست هارد دس فروم یور پرنتس that there's a cow in the stable. They just give you this tradition. You're in a state of heedlessness. And you never said, let me check it out. What's in the stable? Who am I with? But if you come to know this story without taqlid, without blind following. It is then that you become the guest house and the voices will come from you, not from the other places. You become the source of inspiration. You become heaven. You become the sky. You become all of creation and all of the sound of creation will not come from outside, but rather they will come from you. If you come to this realization without taqlid, without blind following, you wake up and you say, I want to open the window and I want to see what is inside of this. And this is the essence of Rumi's teaching, to know the reality of life, to know God. And we have, we don't know how to behave. Once you come to that understanding of who God is, then you will know, oh, he's Al-Wadud, he's the loving God. He is the merciful God. He is the compassionate God. He is the one that loves us. He is, I don't have followers. I don't have any followers. You don't have any followers. None of us have followers. All of those things on Twitter is fake. They're trying to deceive you. You don't have any audience. All of us, we have an audience of one, and it's God. He's the only one who's paying attention to us, looking at us, and wants to know when are we going to have a conversation with him? When are we going to talk to him? When are we going to turn to him? It doesn't matter who we are, regardless of who you are. Whether you're white, you're black, you're man, you're woman, you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Jew, you're a Hindu, you're a Buddhist, you're an agnostic, you're an atheist, you're your own religion, whatever you are doesn't matter. He wants you to be yourself and go to him. He doesn't want you to put on makeup. He doesn't want you to Facebook to, to put on all these filters. He doesn't want you to Photoshop yourself. He loves you the way you are. This is what Musa salam did. He tried to filter. He tried to filter himself. He said, my mouth smells from fasting. Let me brush it. God said, no, I like the smell better than the brush. Don't filter yourself. I like you the way you are. I know your thoughts. I know your heart. You think I don't know your breath? You, didn't, you think I don't know who you are? Come to me the way you are. Bozo, bozo. Haron Jahasti, bozo. Come, come back. Whoever you are, come back. You are a kafir, you are a disbeliever. You don't believe I exist. It's okay. You worship fire, that which I created, it's okay. You worship an idol, your own nafs, your own ego, you, you're in love with your own desires. You worship yourself, you worship a, an idol made out of a stone, it's fine. You can come back. You can turn to me. You can come to me. Why? Why? In dargahi mo, dargahi no midinis, because the kingdom of God is not the kingdom of hopelessness. We are the people who are making the kingdom of God a kingdom of despair for people. We are the one who are turning people away from God. 
God is saying, my kingdom is not a kingdom of hopelessness. All of you come. Come with tubu ilallahi jami'an. Come turn to me, all of you. Every single human being. Because my kingdom is not a kingdom of hopelessness. Nobody will be rejected. There's no rejection in the kingdom of God. It's all acceptance. Every application, even if it's a blank application, it gets accepted. As long as you submit it. As long as you submit it. Satbar agar shikasti bazaar. I know you, my servant. I know you sinned. I know you disobeyed me. I know you said I don't exist. I know you called me names. I know you distanced yourself away from me a thousand years. I know. I know. And I, you know you broke your vows a thousand times. I know you said I'm coming back and then you broke your vows. I know that. Even if you have done that, even if you have broken your vows a thousand times, come back. And please, come as you are. Don't do anything. I want you the way you are. This is God's mercy. This is God. And this is Rumi's understanding of God. And this is why it resonates with people. With every people from all walks of life. Doesn't matter what they believe in. Because he wants them to know themselves. And if you know yourselves, the, an awakened soul is the most dangerous soul in the cosmos. An awakened soul. There's so many people that are sleepwalking through life. And the only time they become awakened is in the grave. What a shame. What a shame. Rumi says, wake up. I came to wake you up. People tell you a story to put you to sleep. I tell you a story to awaken you. And this is why it's important for us in this time and the places that we live to convey this message to people, a message of love, coexistence, and peace. A message for all human beings. And I say this all the time. A Muslim can get upset at me because I don't care. Rumi didn't write his book for you. Sorry, Muslims. All my brothers and sisters, I love you. He didn't write the book for the Muslims. He write it for humanity. Yes. It's a book for humanity. Yes. Share it. Share this book with your neighbors, with your friend, so they can see who we are. This is who we are. Because they're painting another picture. They're showing all these pictures of ISIS and Taliban. They say, this is Islam. And they spend billions of dollars to do this. That's what they spent. They took a religion of Rumi and turned it into this heinous thing. I don't even know what it is. I can't make sense out of it. And I hope nobody makes sense out of it because they're nonsense. That's what they are. They don't belong in any religion. They're in the religion of their own ego and desire. That's what it is. It's nafs. When the nafs of the human being takes you over from ghifla, from heedlessness, and we'll end with a line from the great Indian poet, Abdul Qadir Bedil, a beautiful Persian line. He said that, Gawhar az adami insan nakhahat shud walik. He said, cows and donkeys and all of these animals, no matter how much they imitated the human being, they would never become a human. Parrot could speak like a human being fluent. The parrot will always be a parrot. A donkey can imitate the human being, it will always be a donkey. See, they can never become a human being. But if a human being lives in a state of ghifla, heedlessness for a moment, they automatically become a donkey. And there are too many donkeys in the world in the shape of the human being. And we want to Live a life as a noble creature of God. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have ennobled the children of Adam. And we are all the children of Adam and there's nobility. And to walk with dignity, to talk with dignity, to dress with dignity, and to treat people with dignity in the same way that you want them to treat you. That is at the end of the day 
the message of the great Mawlana, the master, Muhammad Jalaluddin, his original name, Rumi, a Kony that was given to him, Balkhi, the place he was born. Thank you for coming. May God bless you and keep you happy in this world and the next. <laughs>